My journey with liver disease actually began in 2003 to the 2005 era when I started going to a primary care doctor and they noticed high liver enzymes. Looking back, I was sick for more than a decade before I was told I had alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency liver disease. I wish someone would have put the puzzle together, would have done a blood test, would have done whatever it was to test me to make sure I got that diagnosis. When all this began was there were signs building up. My wife was telling me how hey, you don't look good, you don't, you're not acting the same. Uh, and I kept saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, there's nothing wrong, but I would get really tired. The legs were swelling. I didn't put two and two together with Lorinda. I remember going to the doctor and uh, they would say, hey, your, your liver enzymes are a little, little bit elevated, but not that big a deal. So we didn't think anything, you know, as far as that goes. Early on with liver disease, I didn't understand the brain fog that was happening. I just disassociated it with, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. Oh, I'm tired, I didn't get enough sleep. You know, I'm having these rashes. My whole body would itch and I just said, oh, it's the psoriasis, oh, it's the eczema. And it was liver disease the entire time. So in 2016, I decided to move back to Oklahoma. I was living in Arizona and I moved to Oklahoma and I thought, okay, I'm, I'll be close to my family. Then I started feeling bad and I went to the emergency room and I had uh, pancreatitis, ended up getting a liver biopsy and they said, you have end-stage liver disease. And I was in shock and I was crying the entire time. The doctor's like, you didn't know. And I said, I did not know. And it took quite a while for them to find out, you know, what the real problem was. They sent me to a cancer doctor because they couldn't find out what was wrong. Uh, they actually had taken bone marrow out of my back and a bunch of blood work. I went back to work and then I ended up being sick. I was running a fever, put into ICU and a doctor comes in and you have an operable liver cancer and you need a liver transplant or you're gonna die. I had to get rid of liver cancer to even get to transplant. I wanted to quit. There were so many times it was just, it would have been easier for me to say, I'm done. My wife's the one that talked to him first and I heard her saying, liver disease and you're gonna have to have a transplant. And so I was like, I can't believe this. You know, it really hits you hard. And you think about your family. We called Lorinda and told her, I think she suspected stuff. I was very angry and sad that he was diagnosed. You know, I've always wanted to be the big sister and protect him. And, and I was scared because of what he was getting ready to go through because I just went through it. I had a sense of feeling okay there for a while because I figured she did it, I can do it. But I didn't know the process. I didn't know how hard it was to even get on the list. And then once you're on the list, they don't tell you what number you are, where you're at. You just now from then on wait. I had received a call that they had a possible liver and it didn't work out. The liver wasn't viable. So I felt like the rug was just pulled from underneath me and I thought, well, now I'm gonna die, you know, because you don't know when that next call is gonna be. And luckily mine was like a week later. I found out in December that I needed a liver transplant. And then in February, I was able to get on the list. And then by May 27th was whenever I got the transplant. It was just a wave of emotions for everybody. After my liver transplant, the doctor comes walking in and it's like, oh, by the way, I just wanted to tell you, we did a biopsy on your liver and it, you had alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency liver disease. I said, what? Because I'm not, I don't even know what that is. The first time I heard about it is after the surgery. My alpha-1 liver disease was different than Lorinda's. She looked really bad on the outside. I didn't look as bad on the outside, but I was worse on the inside. We were a brother and sister. She had it, then I had it. Before that, nothing had ever been brought up as far as family history or anything like that. I would like healthcare professionals to do AATD liver testing for patients with high liver enzymes because one test can change a family's dynamic. If a family's diagnosed, they can talk to their primary care and take steps to ensure that they're going to do the right things and be prepared for the long term.
So my daughter's 28 years old, so we said, hey, let's get her checked. And then now also she has the Alpha One. But now she knows ahead of time, so hopefully there'll be some stuff to be able to help her. And my daughter was diagnosed as a carrier. She had a genetic test. Alpha One genetic testing is really important for patients to understand, you know, they that piece of the puzzle that comes from their family. Everyone thinks you're cured, just you're good when you get a liver, but there's still a big process you have to continue to go through to be able to keep to the one that you have now. Now you're involved for the rest of your life as far as having stuff done or checked. The medicine is a big deal. I wake up and I'm taking a handful of pills. And I do this twice a day, and so I take over 30 pills a day. And I have to watch out to make sure I don't go into old habits or anything like that. You're having to do all this because you want to stay healthy. It hasn't even been a year since the operation. I'm feeling really good, better than I have in a long time. You see life a little bit different. You want to try to go do more stuff that you had always said you're going to do and you don't do. I know what my purpose is. My purpose is to help patients understand that they're not alone when they're going through things, that there should be no stigma, and it's okay to say that you're not okay. It's okay to say, I want to quit, but it's also okay to get up and fight.